Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So uh, this is going to be the final test of the Corvin cap. Uh, it is January 3rd um, that I'm actually doing this. Um, I did this first, I, this, this bottle was first um, opened and punctured um, around the 20, 20th, 21st, 22nd or so of September. Um, I don't have the exact date and I didn't look at the uh, episode to tell me the exact date. I know it was the episode was released on the 25th of September, which tells me I recorded it the week before. Um, and I had to be on my day off because there was bright light behind me as in like sunlight. Yeah, that exists. So um, we are just past three months. Uh, according to the literature, these uh, Corvin capsules, uh, the Corvin caps, not capsules, the Corvin cap uh, should be able to keep a wine fresh for up to three months. So we're about almost two weeks past that. Um, so we should be good, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> the last test, we were a little around two months or so, and uh, there was a very slight difference between the two wines. So I'm real excited to uh, check out, see what's going on here with this one. So let's just get right into it. Um, If you need to know what these are, this is the 2015 Franz Etz, something like that, uh, Gruner Veltliner. Now what I might do with this, just because it is under cap and if it's still tasting pretty fresh, I might revisit this uh, wine. Um, I might revisit the wine uh, maybe every month or so to see how it's going. I just won't have these fresh bottles to, um, to test them with. All right. Let's crap that real quick. Probably gonna finish this bottle tonight. I'm off the next two days. That's why I really should do these things on Tuesday nights and not like Wednesday and Thursday night, but sometimes I'm just really tired on Tuesdays. So uh, as far as, I mean, Color should not really matter, honestly, with with these wines, um, but they look the same. I was just kind of happy to look at color. All right, Corvin, not Corvin. So they've been out of the fridge for about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes at this point. So they're not ice cold, but they're not warmed up. So on the nose, the Corvin one smells slightly riper, whereas the non, the freshly opened one has a more um, plastic smell. It's a different smell, but by no means does this smell bad. It smells just fine, like freshly opened. Um, they're basically the same aromas, but there's only a slight difference. Let's see how it tastes. Tastes pretty fresh, clean, crisp. Tastes pretty good. This just tastes that much more vibrant, alive, crisp. Um, the acid's bigger, higher. Um, I 
I remember commenting on the last time that the, <clears throat> the acidity level was very slightly different. Um, the one with the Corvin was just a hair underneath, you know, high acid. Now this is more like a medium plus acid. There's, there's a, almost a, almost a creaminess and a roundness to the wine. It's definitely elevated acid. Um, it's still fresh, it's clean, lots of lime, a um, little bit of white pepper, just very, very slight white pepper. Um, um, almost like a, a, a key lime pie type of, of um, flavor to it. I get a little more, I get like a um, mango. But another kind of, um, like a peach, like a peach aroma off, off the nose on the non Coravin one. And it's just super crisp. Like, oh, it's so, so mouthwatering. All right, so <clears throat> conclusion. As you can see, I didn't, you can see, I don't know if you can tell, there's almost three quarters of a, of a bottle still left in this. I would call that, if I was at work, I'd call like a 0.6 on the inventory, a 0 0.55, 0 0.6. Um, so there's still quite a bit of wine left in there. And if I wanted to hold it for longer and check it in a month or two, it will probably continue to slowly degrade. Um, whereas obviously this is just tastes like it's just opened, but does it work? Does it, is it going to keep the wine fairly fresh for three months or, or a little bit longer? Yeah. Is this like, this is a one-time test. It was with one, with one kind of wine. Um, but if, it, if you want to have the same experience with these wines as you would with, you know, something like this, which is a future episode, um, which has a regular regular um, cork in it though this is probably more well this might be a, a might be a regular cork might be a might be a hybrid cork anyway but you know you want to have the same experience with a Corvin where you get with like a regular cork wine um, where you may not be drinking the bottle immediately you at least are not going to be drinking it within three four days if you're going to use a vacuum vin then yeah man I mean this is definitely worth it if it's going to take you maybe a week or two uh, to finish this, to finish a, a bottle of wine, you just want like a glass every, you know, every few days, or maybe you, it's going to, it's going to last you a month. It's going to be just fine. I mean, the first month test, it was like identical on the wines. I consider it like a successful test for Coravin. This so why it's still totally drinkable. Um, In some ways, I prefer this one because it's not as ripping acidity. It's a little calmer, um, like it's decanted. I guess I don't know. It's, it, it's it's you know it's like how red wine. If you decant red wine, the tannins soften. Well, the acid seems to have softened a little bit, and it's like really pleasurable to drink. Um, but it's definitely different than than the freshly opened bottle. And if you if you gave me these two wines blind, I would assume they were different wines. Um, or, you know, maybe not different grapes, but like two different bottles of wine. Yeah, I was going to do it for this episode. I know a short episode. What? Eight minutes, nine minutes. How does that happen? Anyway, I was going to do it for this episode. As always, click the links above to frame me up. Click the links below to find more information about this. Um, we'll have... After this, we've still got some um, Burgundy episodes to do. There's a 400th episode somewhere contained around there. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do, if anything. I'd like to do something special. I'm not really sure because then we also have Valentine's, which maybe this year I don't do a Valentine's special so I can do a 400th episode. I don't know. 
I've got a whole bunch of Burgundy episodes to do, and uh, I got a cocktail conference to go to in a couple, uh, well, next week here in San Antonio, uh, or actually it's this week as far as this episode is concerned. Um, I'll be there on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, um, head, heading up the, uh, well, Thursday night, uh, going to their opening, um, the opening uh, event at the, at the Duseum, opening night. Um, I will be uh, popping into some seminars on Friday and Saturday, and then covering the um, the events on Friday and Saturday night. So I anticipate it to be very similar to last year, where I'm just going to have my phone on a selfie stick, along with my little thing, you know, and uh, uh, walking around looking like, look kind of strange. What, what's going on there? And um, yeah, except there'll be the iPhone 10, and we'll see how the camera works on that. I might even try the Filmic Pro thing. I'm not really sure. I, I, I get a little nervous trying to use that for like this stuff. I, I don't mind experimenting with it. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's going to be cocktail conference. Those episodes or that episode itself, because it'll be like a mishmash of stuff, um, probably will be sometime after Valentine's Day. I'm not really sure. It will not be the 400th episode. I'm not going to make that my 400th episode. Uh, so, yeah. Let's wrap it up. We'll see everyone again next time.